Welcome to our weekly press conference. Nice to have everyone. We have some very special guests that we want to get to very quickly here. You won't be able to tell it this weekend, but it is springtime and we're ready. Uh, today's going to be a great day to get out and play golf before winter hits again, isn't it? I, and, and they're making me work all day, Troy. So this time of year, certainly I know that uh, we're looking forward to everything greening up, especially our golf courses. We have some really exciting news to talk about in terms of our golf courses. There's going to be a groundbreaking on May 15th for the um, new First Tees program that will be placed at McDonald Golf Course. It's, uh, it's going to be a great addition to Wichita. It's going to be a great addition to our golfing community. And so First Tee will begin construction of their new campus building, which will include indoor hitting bays that will be used for instruction and other programming. The bays will be accessible to the First Tee junior golfers and others taking private lessons from the Wichita Public Golf Course staff. The driving range is anticipated to open in the spring of 2019. And so here to talk about it are two golfers, which they will tell you I'm not. I just enjoy the game. <laughs> so we have Troy Hendricks, our manager of our golf division, and Tom West from First Tee. And so whoever wants to take the podium, I'm going to turn it over to you two. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. Um, First tee, many people don't, have, if they have any knowledge about the first tee, it comes from watching professional golf on television, and you'll see occasionally a commercial or such about it. But essentially what the first tee is, is a youth learning development uh, organization where we teach kids the basics of golf, but what we really do is teach them what we call, what we fondly refer to as our nine core values, uh, such things as honesty, integrity, uh, perseverance, patience, and so on. Um, if you've ever played golf for any length of time, those are our inherent values that we all kind of learn just by osmosis, so to speak. So we learn to be honest by uh, you know, we have to keep our own score. We, we can't move the golf ball. We hit it as it lies, things like that. Um, we're courteous to the other players in the group and other players on the golf course. So those are things that um, the first tee is really all about. Um, our particular chapter was started, uh, this will actually be our third golf season, uh, we do what we call programming with kids, uh, three locations right now, Tex and Solver on the west side, uh, McDonald Park in, in the middle Midtown area, and then Teradyne Country Club right now. Um, this particular project was kind of a dream of mine that I came up with uh, uh, two or three years ago. There's this wonderful unused space on the west side of McDonald Park so in conversations with the mayor and with Troy and several others, um, we built a partnership where um, uh, the city is gonna allow us to, to build this complex and it's gonna be designed for a multi-purpose, one and such. It's gonna be a public facility so public golfers can use it for a driving range and practice area. But primarily it's gonna be our headquarters where we can use it uh, for our programming with youth anywhere from 5 to 16 years of age. Um, we'll have an, a, a building that will be our headquarters, an administration area, but we call it a learning center because we'll do a lot of things with the kids indoors, even in, in nice weather, but also in inclement weather. Um, so it'll also have two indoor-outdoor hitting bays, so even in the middle of winter, we can, we can take the kids and teach them some of the basics of golf and so on. So we're very excited about the project. As you can see, we're gonna start it in phases starting about mid-May. Um, we hope to have the driving range available for the juniors uh, later this fall, but the entire facility will be usable again starting uh, next spring sometime. So that's about it. Appreciate it. Finish up. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tom. We're excited about having this new uh, facility built at McDonald Golf Course. We believe it'll be something that the east side uh, public golfers will be look forward to using and being able to go to work on their game. The golf division and the Wichita Public Golf Course has a lot of things going on and coming up. Uh, here on May the 2nd, we're going to have our golf mania at Auburn Hills. What that'll be is we'll have club fitting and demo days where people can come out and hit clubs and get fit by uh, professional club fitters uh, for clubs that you can use. We're going to have our snag equipment out there and our snagopotamus set up for the little kids to hit balls into the snag, the hippopotamus's mouth. We'll actually have the recreation station out there as well, which will ha have games and things for kids to do that are of a younger age. And we'll be also be providing hot dogs and chips and drinks to anybody that wants to come out for that event. Uh, on May 1st, we start our Sunset Specials, which is played at Tex Consolver and at Sim Golf Course. At Tex Consolver, you can come out after 7 p.m. and play five holes for $5. And at Sim Golf Course, you can play seven holes for $7. We also are excited with it. We'll be again having our youth weekend special on Saturdays and Sundays that if you bring a junior out to play golf, they play for $2 accompanied by an adult paying a regular greens fee. We also have available that can be picked up at the Dillon's stores and you can also find it on our website, our golf guide, which has all the programming and everything that we're doing to promote golf in the city of Wichita in that. So other than that, Mr. Mayor, it's going to be a perfect day to go play golf. Absolutely. Thank you, Troy. Troy, Tom, thank you both. I think it's fantastic what you both are doing, and um, we hope that we can continue to um, grow our wonderful game of golf here in Wichita. So we appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to play again with you, Troy, here coming up. Get your back in shape. Um, next, we want to talk about the um, parade coming up. We have our, our Support Your Law Enforcement Parade this Saturday. Looking forward to it, even though the weather will be a little bit chilly, it'll still be a great time to get out there and support our law enforcement and their families. Leading the parade this year is a delegation of some very special young people from Susan's Kids, which aims to help find forever families and the many kids in need in our community. And so I'm gonna ask Susan to come up and share a little bit about the two special friends that she brought. So Susan. Thank you, thank you. All right, little, not little, Isaac is 10 years old and Jareth is seven years old. They both want to be police officers when they grow up. So when Casey uh, Slaughter called me and said, you know, we need a couple of grand marshals. I said, I think we've got the perfect ones. I called Kansas Children's Service League and they said, yeah, we have two boys who really want to be police officers when they grow up. They have been at the police headquarters two times now. They are so very excited, honored, and, and uh, thrilled to be here. Um, it does a lot for their self-esteem. They've gained some mentors while they are here. They are looking for forever homes. They've been in the foster care system for a while, but they want to make good lives for themselves. They're looking for forever homes. And I would love them to just come up here for a few minutes and we could ask them a couple questions. Come on, Isaac and Jared. Come on up and say hi. Okay, so this is Isaac. He's 10, and this is Jareth, and he is seven. I'm trying to see how we can get the microphone. Okay, oh, what? That, is it close enough? Okay, so um, are you happy to be here? Yes. What have you done in the last couple days with the police department? Um, we went and we saw a few of their, we saw one of their cars and we saw their antique car. What do you want to be when you grow up? A police. Why? Um, to, to, to see what uh, police get to do and see how they do things and try it out myself. And try it out yourself. All right, Jared. There you go, Okay. Here, come on over this way, Jared. What have you done in the last couple of days with the police department? Um, I, um... I actually got to hang out with the police, and it's my brother Isaac, and, and um, 
just like Isaac said, um, just, um, just got to see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, and by the way, these two are brothers. They're looking for forever homes, either together or separately. They'd prefer to be together. What do you have here on here? Um, a police badge. A police badge? What do you think about that? It reminds me of being a police. It reminds you of being a police officer. And what are you thinking about being in the parade? Are you gonna, what are you gonna do in the parade? I'm looking forward to um, be with all the police in Wichita. What about you, honey? Mm, I'm looking forward to seeing um, a lot of cops and canines in p police cars. I want to see the cops and the canines. But basically, they're here looking for a forever home. Isaac and Jareth. And if I could call Corey Latta up from the Kansas Children's Service League just sure. for 30 seconds. Absolutely. He came all the way from Topeka, and he wants to just say a few things about what an honor it is for these two to be here today. Yeah. Um, just want to say that this is a great opportunity for our boys here. Um, they're great kiddos, and this is something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. We also want to thank Susan for all her hard work and her dedication and for caring about our kids so much. This is something that does so good for our community and for our kids. And so I just uh, am going to spread a lot of thanks. That's my main goal. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Come all, came all the way from Topeka to tell us thank you to Wichita for supporting Susan's kids. Uh, thank you to the city of Wichita for supporting Susan's kids. And we'll see you Saturday at the parade with these two grand marshals. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, Susan, thank you. Isaac, Jared, thank you both. We're looking forward to you helping us in this year's parade. Dress warm. It might be a little bit cold out there Saturday, but it's still going to be a great time. And, and so we hope to see all of you out there and support. Um, and we certainly appreciate the, uh, the mission that they undertake. The council and I will be in the parade, regardless of how cold it gets, showing our support, braving the second winter as it hits us this Saturday. Maybe the only real snow we get this year, who knows? But uh, still gonna be a great time to enjoy. The, un the only other thing I would share with you is uh, starting this evening at eight o'clock is our gridiron this year that's going to be held at the Orpheum. The only teaser I will tell you is there's a lot more mayor in gridiron this year. So I don't know what that means for all of you yet, but there's a lot more mayor in it. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come out and support. Gridiron has raised $240,000 for scholarships for journalist students. So it uh, goes to a great cause. So appreciate it, and we'll open it up for questions. Any update uh, with the baseball team coming to Wichita? So no, no update at this point in time. We uh, are still working through the process as painful and slow as it is and uh, still feel good about uh, having a, a new stadium built and ready to play in by 2020. Well, thank you all and appreciate you coming.